Good evening. Welcome to Central Sports Special on a night of exclusive action to suit every sporting taste. Fireworks as top meet second in Division 2. It's a full house for Port Vale against Stoke City. And with us, as always, Jimmy Greaves to add his special Thank brand of expertise and opinion. Football first, it's the Potteries Derby. What a season it's been up there. Stoke City, seven points clear at the top of Division 2. Port Vale are the only team in the country still unbeaten at home, and that's more than three quarters of the way through the season. The commentator at Vale Park is Peter Brackley. It's a pretty foul night in the Potteries. Driving rain here for most of the day, but nothing surely will dampen the enthusiasm of two teams who've been such a credit to the second division throughout the season. The recent arrival from Middlesbrough of Bernie Slaver has added an extra dimension to Port Vale's attacking play, although after tonight they'll have to do without him for three matches. He starts the suspension that resulted from being sent off on his Port Vale debut. Surplus two requirements at Anfield, it would seem, but the experience of Bruce Grobbilar will be invaluable, of course, to Stoke City during his loan spell from Liverpool. Grobbilar, who's replacing the injured Ronnie Sinclair, out for the rest of the season. Actually, a full house at Vale Park as Port Vale then kick off, attacking the goal to our right. An all-ticket crowd soaking up the atmosphere as well as the rain for this latest confrontation between the two clubs so forcefully leading the way in the second division. Round five of the derby matches between the two this season. Port Vale have twice beat the winners, Stoke just the once, and the other game of the FA Cup was a draw. Two teams right in form despite Stoke's setback on Saturday. And they were beaten at home for the first time in the league this season. Now, this is Sully on the rack paint chair for Port Vale. Van der Laan. Now Walker. Such an elegant player. And the first free kick of the game is given in favour of Port Vale. And by Steve Foley. And right at the heart of the action for Stoke City tonight. It's a crunching tackle too. And here then is Bruce Grobbila. His fourth game during his left spell from Liverpool. And he says if he likes it here, and things don't work out back at Anfield, that certainly seems the way at the moment. He won't mind staying in Port Vale if they want him to. Free kick now then to Stoke City. in search of Steen right across the face of the goal and well they gathered in by Muscle White Van der Laan here's Slaven a lot of favour at Middlesbrough hoping to make an impression he certainly did that in his first game report by when he was set off Van der pulling away Butler now. And the ball will be skidding across the surface. Had so much heavy rain throughout the day. And it's going to make life very treacherous and difficult for both teams. Now Steen. Five goals in his last six matches, Mark Steen. Two of them from the penalty spot. Now they're going to set something up here. Steen with the shot! And Steen with the goal! Bracket finish then by Mark Steen. A goal from a master poacher, number 29 this season. The butler had got away down the right. Excellent cross in, and no one had picked up Steen. And that's a quality finish. And Stoke City take the lead. Really sloppy defending. Spotted it really well, Glickhorn, since his move from Birmingham. Earlier in the season, Steen's pass now. Steen again. Oh, really tricky play then by Mark Steen. He's causing all sorts of problems with his neat footwork. 
And he really is an inspired form, Mark Steen. Here's Glover, the former Aston Villa player, coming up to Billing. You get those step defenders almost on the halfway line. No offside flag though this time. As Stanford has to play it away. Port Vale just beginning to impose himself a little now. Here's Slaven. And he's won the free kick. Bernie Slaven, who's an accomplished goal scorer, but still seeking his first in Vale's colours. And that's what we've got him for, said John Rudge. Now, Sonny with the free kick. Here's Walker. Setting himself up for the shot, but failing to hit the target. Ray Walker, who's been in really outstanding form for Port Vale this season. Such a stylish midfield player. Of course, wide there. One from Walker. Here's Billing now. Kerr. What can Sully do here? Found some space for himself well. And Romola having to tip it over the bar. Risking nothing there, Bruce Romola with a hurling cross to Chris Sully. Free transfer from Blackburn back in the summer. And what a useful acquisition he has proved to be, Chris Sully. Movement from Kerr down into a path of Walker. Chance here, no. Slaven then driven wide by Sully. The best chance that Port Vale have created so far. And Sully will be disappointed he couldn't finish off a flowing move. Expertly done there by Kerr. Walker's pass picking out Sully eventually. And right across the face of the goal. It's all Port Vale at the moment. Sully just knocked it on there. What can Walker do here? And squirting away from it. Probably lies after it. Nothing predictable about Brucey. And I bet he's loving it out there. I love the occasion. Relishes the big match. Shot then from Ray Walker, whose influence is growing with every passing second. Just stepped over the top. Now the break is on here. Steen and Regis. It's Steen. It could have been the second. And he knows it too. How quickly then they burst forward. Port Vale's defence was exposed, and Steen couldn't finish off the job. Walker, support from Van der Laan, and Sully outside him. Couched in the middle, hoping on the cross. Here's Van der Laan now. Slaven, turned sharply, still Slaven. Oh, great save from Grobelaar. Really good save then. My word, it needed it. Slaven had set himself up for the shot with a delightful piece of play. And Rusi was equal to it. Round the tackles at Slaven. And down went Rusi to save. The whistle blown by Roger Belford. And the crowd. I really enjoyed this first half. Mark Steen's goal, the only one we've seen so far. But there certainly have been opportunities at both ends. And right at the death, the save from Bruce Grobular defied Bernie Slaven. Stoke Lee then at half time by a goal to nil.
So, Stoke City then start the second half. Now kicking from left to right. And they really haven't looked back, Stoke, since topping the table around mid-November time. Indeed, Saturday's defeat at home by Blackpool, not only their first at the Victoria Ground this season, only their second defeat in the league since September. That's how consistent they have been. And, of course, Port Vale have kept pace with them. Just hoping that they might slip up in the uh, last few weeks of the season to overtake them in the chase for the championship. But these two very much the favourites to go up in the automatic positions. Westine now. Here goes Regis. Well, it was a rather hopeful effort. But it might just have embarrassed Muscle White had it been on target. He's so brave at Foxfoot. Dave Regis. Well, he's pulled a muscle, I would think, there. Certainly has a problem, Roger Belford. And it does seem then that the senior linesman is going to have to take over. comes the reserve official, Mr. Ingram. So he'll take over one of the flags. And Gareth Davis takes over the whistle. Now John Rutsch, wondering if his team could turn this around. So disappointed that uh, the other thing, Taylor wasn't going to make it tonight. And they're certainly missing him out there. Regis, is any Steen up with him? So we're just going in alone. And he's got the free kick. Great perseverance. Well, rather protesting. But they just couldn't combat the strength then of Regis, who went plowing off through the middle. And in the end, Glover just ran straight into him. Free kick then to Stoke. Oh, and a save from Blackhawk's drive. Really let fly that Nigel Blackhawk. And Muscle White really had to be on his metal. It was dipping in just under the bar. He goes and the header from Glenkhorn just crept in under the bar despite the efforts of a defender there to keep it off the line. Nigel Glenkhorn, the former Birmingham City player, with his sixth goal of the season, maybe now has put the game beyond the reach of Port Vale. This is Kerr with Houchin and Jeffers. Now Van der Laan. Made it towards Houchin, but it didn't reach him again. Van der Laan. And it'll be a free kick to Stoke City. The Dutchman's penalised. free kick on by Regis finding Steen Walker in well but it falls for Regis now Steen taking over good effort two by Steen and Musselwhite only just held off a really menacing figure and he was so quick to spot the possibilities there and he had the confidence to shoot from the long range he's going as far as he dare 
up towards Houchen. The wide in the air. Houchen again going in strongly. And the shot on the turn! And it was Slaven's effort. And Robila once again performing heroics in the Stoke goal. Sharp turn. And what a save by Robila from Slaven. It goes Jeffers now. And he would have preferred that on his left foot. Flags up against Mark Steen, who looks indignantly towards the linesman. Can't believe the decision. But he can believe the result if it stays this way. Glover with the free kick. Well, that's it. The final whistle. A fabulous night for Stoke City. There, on loan goalkeeper Bruce Gromila milking every moment of it. Lou Macari's team open up then a 10 point lead at the top over Port Vale as he exchanges handshakes with John Runch, his opposite number of Port Vale. Glenkhorn with the second goal after Mark Steen's opener just a few minutes in. Glenkhorn in the second half and Brucey Gromila will look back on a couple of vital saves on the way. Stoke City's night. They've beaten Port Vale at Vale Park by two goals to nil. Is that the championship gone now? Um, you never know in this game. Um, we want to finish in the first or second spot. Whatever it will be, we'll be quite happy at that. I think you've said you were more worried about the teams below you than about Well, Stoke that's right. Out. I mean, I didn't think that uh, before tonight's match that uh, Stoke were going to finish in other than the first or second spot. Um, it's the Boltons, the West Broms and the Stockports I'm a little bit more concerned about because we want to go um, to get promotion in the first or second spot. How much better a side are you now, do you think, than the one that just missed out last year? Uh, better than last year. Uh, I've said it all along and when we lost on Saturday people were starting to say, you know, are they going to do what they did last year? Uh, I never felt we've got uh, the sort of team that will panic like we did last year. Saturday we had an awful day, we never looked like winning. And, uh, you know, strange things happen in football and, and strange things happened here tonight. We've come here and we've, we've outplayed a much better team than Blackpool. No disrespect to, to Blackpool because on the day they deserve to beat us. But uh, we've showed the other side of ourselves tonight. Uh, no, I'm confident we can, we can last the pace. There they are. That 10-point lead is back. Port Vale hanging on. Well, Jimmy Greaves, uh, mm -hmm. Lou Macari yes, is that rare Scotsman. He's a teetotaler. But um, putting that aside, do you think he'll be reaching for the champagne just yet? I don't think so. I, he could well be going down to Labrooks to collect his winnings, couldn't he, young Lou? Tax paid, of course, yeah. Lou. Um, yeah, yeah. But uh, good performance, wasn't it? Mm. Uh, he must be pretty confident now, Stoke. It was a good result for them. And Paul Vale, to be fair, and no mean side themselves. And with the injury to Taylor, wasn't it? And they, they, they battled well. They look a good side. I'd still think that they are in pole position to go up as well. Personally. You're enthused not only about Mark Steen's goal, but also the setup. Oh, the, without doubt, um, John Butler, wasn't it? It was shades of Sir Stanley in the old red and white stripes for Stoke City going down the wing there. Um, something I remember very well because in his testimonial game, he did just this crossed it like that and I slotted it a bit like my, <laughs> myself, Bobby, all those years ago. But it was Sir Stan mm. all over that, wasn't it? It was super stuff. Great, great run. I mean, the great thing is really that it's a great revival up there. I mean, they're getting big crowds at yeah. both games. I mean, uh, Port Vale has got a chance of winning the Autoglass Trophy, Stoke yes. did it the other year. It's revival time in a big way. It is indeed. And, and, and I think that showed tonight because... Uh, uh, you saw the crowd, you saw the, the, the way the game was played. As I say, I, taking nothing away from Stoke City, uh, they, they won and won well, but uh, Port Vale are a, a good side. And tonight he will have, have realised that his decision to take Bruce Grobelar on loan was vindicated. He, he had a good match, didn't he? Well, Brucey, I think, was a real shrewd loan job, this. He, he hasn't bought him, remember that. So he, he's not forked out any real dough for Bruce. And I think um, to have a man who's played in European Cups and won Cups and League medals and everything like that and 
Making saves like that, as Brucey did, and he came out well. He made one or two mistakes, but he commanded the area in general. I think that was a pretty shrewd move by Lewis. And, and just a very quick word, John Rogers done a great job. He's having a testimonial up there this year. He doesn't half deserve it, doesn't he? He deserves it because, I mean... Not many people know where Port Vale is, Bob, do they? You've the never country? been, have you, for one? I've never been, <laughs> thank God. But good luck to them. I think they'll... I hope they come up. Excellent.